What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Auburn Open in Auburn, California. This is the PDGA A tier event, three rounds, three days, sponsored by the Auburn Chains Obbies Disc Golf Club. Commentary it's me, Dan Turner, and my buddy Spanky Edwards. What's going on, guys? All right, let's jump right into the uh, player intros here. We got Matt Bell. Uh, Coming out of Nevada City, 1027 rated. This guy's on tour, pro, big time player. It's cool to see these guys here in town. Here's a local guy, 999 rated, Brian Deardall. Don't know much about him, but he's got an old PGA number. It's probably quite the golfer. Yeah, it's cool to see James Proctor for sure. Like you said, watching these guys on tour all year, and then they come kind of to our hometown and shoot the courses that we get to play a lot. So definitely excited to see Andrew Mar Reed tear this course up. Um, always a pleasure to watch on tour, so curious to see him. All right. Welcome to the 2024 Auburn Open MPO feature card. Coming up first on the tee pad. Representing Infinite Discs and Thought Space Athletics, James Proctor. Yeah. Well, Proctor's kind of a Norcal guy. A lot of players around here know him, but he's been on tour the last few years. This basket's about 410, 120 feet downhill, tucked up to the right. I like a forehand play if this hooks up. Wow. Next up, local hero representing the Auburn Disc Golf Club Chain Zombies, Brian Deardall. All right, Brian, let's see the uh, the local knowledge, huh? Looks like he's going to go forehand here, too. Stay clean, and it should be proper. Uh, maybe not as much turn as he was looking for. Next on the card, representing Thought Space, Matt Bell. Matt Bell, another guy, kind of NorCal roots, but he's been on tour the last few years. Quite a player. Excited to watch him putt and play in these voided holes. Absolutely. This guy games. Is he pretty familiar with this course? Do you know? I would think so with Nevada City just being up, up Highway 49 a little bit. Right. Ooh, roller here. Representing DGA. Up on the rocks down there. Yeah, tough for the catch hand to pick up the roller sometimes, but uh, we'll assume he's maybe about pin high. Looks like it was wide left. Now, Marwe, uh, in my mind, he's known for his forehand. Um, so that's what he's reaching for here. I could see that. Looks like they have pretty favorable weather. Uh, with this course... Being in the Central Valley, it can be pretty hot sometimes, but uh, playing it in May, looks like they just got primo golf weather. Yeah, for sure. A little low there for Marweed. He's probably about 120 feet out, just maybe kind of tricky. See if he, he's running it or just trying to get it close. Yeah, just laying up to those trees. Yeah, maybe a little farther than I thought. Here's Bell's roller. Oh, bummer. All right. Brian just flicks one up there nicely. It looks like he left himself a little bit short, though. Hey, these guys are showing us it's pretty hard to get to this basket, huh? Pretty well, yeah. pre pretty well protected down that hill. Yeah. Looks like on round one out of, uh, you know. I saw two, what, two, three birdies? No, nah, there's probably more of a handful, five or six, but there's 80 people in the field. Uh, Bell with a nice circle's edge about to start off his round. Yeah. Marweed, nice putt there. It's inside the circle for par. Now, these touring pros, I, I think the week before this tournament, they played the OTB Open. Yeah. Um, so they're coming off playing a pretty big, big course, big throws, and then they're, you know, they've come up here to Auburn to play a little more technical golf. Um, I'm curious to see how they fare just with the transition. Yeah, actually, a lot of them were up in Tahoe before they came down to this one. Mm -hmm. 
Hole number two, 350. It plays, I feel like, farther than that. The spike hyzer is the only way. Maybe if a guy's got a grenade or something. But there's uh, the roads OB if you go left. And uh, there's a creek long. Big spike hyzer is preferred play. Some guys, if you don't have the power, you can go through the gap, go low. But it's kind of convoluted and still hard to get to close to the hoop even. Oh, wow, look at this roll. Uh, very favorable roll. Brought him right to it. Yeah, that was a solid reaction. Yeah, it looks like everybody's going with the same option, huh? Right over the top. Yeah. crashing down right near the basket. It looks like all of our players got pretty close to the circle, except James here. Yeah, I felt like those drives looked left on the camera, but they were actually spot on. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It was Bell from Birdie from about 30. Ah, birdie from 30. I like it. Cash. Mar, we a little downhill putt here for Birdie. You can see the creek right back there. It's kind of, it's not real big, but it, that's where the OB line is and along with the road. Yeah, it's, it is pretty close. Like Brian's started to roll, it obviously caught in those bushes, but could have rolled towards that creek. Mm -hmm. oh, good putt, just over the cage. All right, James cleans up his par and we're gonna head over to hole three. Hole three, I think, distance-wise, is one of the shortest holes in the course, listed as 185. Um, you're going to see Brian. Looks like he's going to throw an Anheuser. Oh, he's going grenade. That was for sure a grenade because it, it's almost like a left-to-right shot. Um, there's a couple lanes up the middle. I know it's a little bit tougher to get to the basket. Matt's, looks like Matt's going to flick a, something down the middle here. Yeah, this is the route I would go. But yeah, clearly, it's pretty tricky. Uh, tricky one eight for one eighty five. Yeah, yeah, you could say that again. Marweed's going pure forehand spike Iser. Oh, nice, good drop. James kind of going with that same idea, forehand spike Iser. It's kind of funny to watch the hole there. As soon as it leaves, they have no idea where it's going to go until the catch cam picks it up, you know? Yeah, right. You can see they're down the tee right there. Matt slides one up, trying to sneak in a long birdie. Yeah, the whole fairway leading up to it is pretty tricky if you don't just hit the gap. Nice birdie from Proctor. Marweed from about 22. I don't know if you've got a pair of baskets, Pinky, but uh, these box sevens I think are my favorite. They catch super good and they sound super cool. It's just that, it's just what I like about baskets. Uh, these are my favorite. I would have to agree. Oh, yeah, I never really, uh, I never really thought about it until we got the box sevens of our Paradise Park and. The, that's when I was, uh, we got hole four, 358, par three. Like a low ceiling right off the tee. Yeah, some guys go roller here. You can see the baskets back across the uh, the, car the bike path there. I almost called it a cart path. <laughs> so these guys are all preferring the forehand. That's probably the biggest gap. But like I said, I have seen the roller hill with some pretty solid results. It's pretty downhill off the tee as well, right? Like the, ja the camera is not exactly showing how low they have to throw it to get below that stuff. It's definitely like an exact gap. Oh, there we go. Bell's got the roller. He knows. This one looks like it's coming across nicely. 
Oh, wow. I think we're pretty close to park right there. We'll see where his lion's up. James with a putter up shot. Ooh. Have a dirty kick, but he's right there. Absolutely. You kind of want yeah. it. There is a creek deep you can see, but it's really hard to get into it. Um, oh, yeah. This is Bell's roller finished up here. Nice birdie. James to clean up the par. Easy peasy. There's one thing for sure the higher rate of these players, they just, I mean, it's like they clean up everything in the circle. They're just like automatic. It's pretty cool to watch. They make it look simple, but. I stand over a 28 footer. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> why did I do this to myself? <laughs> yeah. For sure, making fun of myself for my layups. Is this, oh, so this is the temporary hole five, right? Yeah, this one's only available usually during tournament play. It's um, tricky, a little left to right. Uh, I think the forehand makes a lot. The right hand forehand makes a lot of sense. You see Andrew wow. kind of ran it. It is tricky, and then, you know, even the locals, you just don't get much opportunity to practice it. So I guess it evens it out for everybody that's from out of town. Okay, I think that was a fair bit short. Yeah, here we go. Circle two, maybe long circle two. Gave it a good bid. Yeah. Bell, long look from what looks to me close to 50. Oh! Count it a deuce. Count nice it. Kind of off to a pretty hot start there. ceiling mm. tough look with the stretched out knee putt there you know it's ugly yeah especially to go that long on the drive James nice 30 footer for bird Marweed cleans it up So the next hole, hole number six, which is actually course hole five, because we just played this temp hole, is uh, for the tournament only, it's playing as a par four all the way to six's basket. So uh, we'll see it here shortly, but there's a Mando off the tee. I know it's popular for a righty to throw a right-hand forehand. Maybe a backhand roller could also do the thing. Um, it's way through that V-tree off the tee, deep right, 600-foot hole, so... This looks like to be a pretty good shot if it gets clean. We'll see. There it is. Are you kidding? That was good. Yeah. That was good. That was fun to watch. See, Proctor might be reaching roller here as well, the way Angle he's holding up his disc. Nothing like it. Looks like he got caught up a little bit, but I think from there, it, you know, both these guys should have a not too challenging up and down, just some trees, but not a whole lot of distance. They got they bit off a lot of the distance with their rollers. Yeah, looking like that forehand play is oh, wow, Marred with your untraditional forehand, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there it went. <laughs> and see, even I mean, the yeah, locals throwing the roller too, that's how you know it's good. Yeah, three out of four. It looks like he's begging for that to get down. Yeah, well, you can see there, there was the basket. It's kind of a big embankment, but there is an OB fence, right? Um, it's almost a little bowl down there that it's in, though. This looks like a little bit pretty dang good. A little bit. James is looking at the basket here. A little putter toss. See if he can ring it up. Oh! 
Good bid. Left himself a Over circle's edge putt, huh? Wow, Matt's down here in circle two. Oh! I didn't see that tree. Did you see that I tree? I did not see that tree. It was perfectly shadowed. So this is Proctor coming back for what uh, would be birdie. Oh. A little bit high on the soft side there. Routine for Matt Bell, 28 Absolutely. feet. Nice birdie. Keep now, Brian's up on the hill. He's close, but it's just a little, you know, just not something you practice a whole lot, you know? Yeah. Made it look easy. Should just be a couple tap ins and moving on to seven. I'm just curious if 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 Marweed brought brought his cookies or not for when he birdies. We'll see. His most gangster move ever. <laughs> Cookie mini. This is where we're at, premium disc golf store, South Lake Tahoe. If you haven't been in here yet, come check it out. You can throw some discs, test out some putters. If you're a climber, those walls are sick. Absolutely. Hole number seven, 420 feet. S pretty deep and then a little bit left. Matt's throwing looks like will be a hyzer flip that's going to turn and then come back left. And it looks like it got caught up a little bit short. This is a tricky hole. You can go low, but it's so convoluted. These yeah. guys all have the power to go over the top, I think. So, yeah, you know. There's a little... Oh. Mar, we just got caught somewhere in between there, I feel like. Undecided. Over or <laughs> under. <laughs> okay, so Brian is going low, and... And it got clean for a long time. So oh, way down there. Yeah, he knows the line he likes. He's got a little tester at it. It's circle two. Yeah, looking like a 50, 60 footer maybe. Yeah, I think the first round this hole only had two birdies. That's just to show you, you know, out of 80 MPO players. That's how tough it's playing. Put your gas it up, big boy. A couple of our, our guys got a chance to be, be those two, it looks like. He doesn't seem to like it. No. Oh, here's Marweed again now to save his three. Oh. Good run, but he's going to have to settle for a bogey there, it looks like. Yeah. Here's Bell's look for two. He's staring it down, at least. Oh, begging oh, for it to get oh, up. Oh. So close. 2.8. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, maybe, a, yeah. Just barely a three. Ryan's where you look just sails over narrowly. No, Proctor. This is like 50 feet. Little... There you go, Proctor. Shake it out. Yeah, he's like, I'm not loose enough. It wasn't his best effort, I would say, for that birdie put, and I think he would agree with me. Ends up the par, like you said, only two twos on round one, so mm -hmm. you know taking the three isn't gonna hurt you too bad. Okay. Tough bogey, but on to the next one. All right, back across the bridge, over to hole number eight here. This one's it doesn't look like it. Oh, Matt's throwing a roller, but we'll see how this one finishes out. Wow. He got all the distance in America and then some. <laughs> My goodness. That was sweet. Okay, so for these guys, the roller is preferred line. That makes sense. It plays more uphill than I think the camera gives it justice for. It's just uphill all the way. So it's tough to get an air shot there. James's roller hit 
hits the ground where my air shot gets to. Classic. <laughs> Absolutely. And look at that. Four rollers. Yeah. Definitely seems like the best way to attack it if you got that shot. It's a pretty good look from our weed. Probably going to be circle two or deep C2. Kind of hard to tell where he was. This is another hole in the course out of 80 MPO players. Oh, oh, so close. Yeah, only a few birdies on this one today. Like you said, it's so uphill. That 421 is playing a lot farther than that. Oh, he sure oh did. wow. <laughs> nice plant. Oh, I think James maybe missed a Mando with his roller because that was for bogey. Oh. That makes the most sense. So he threw three from the Mando tree and then just not cleaned up his bogey. That makes more sense. Yeah, hole 18 is like right over there, I feel like. So if you, you just, they just don't want you messing with the left side. There's Terman Central back there. Lining, lined up by these pickleball courts. The pickleballers drive, drove the tennis players out of town, is what I heard. Oh, wow. <laughs> All pickleball or nothing. Hole number nine, downhill 390. Probably plays what feels like less than that, I would say. But, but maybe because it's downhill. Bell yeah. throwing a nice forehand. Brian doing the same. Seeming like a pretty stock. Righty forehand, right down to it. When it looks like that, I mean, yeah, that's stock if you got it. All right, we're using the whole fairway. Creeping down. Uh, he's not going to mm, like that. Yeah, a little wide out of the hand. Yeah, just a little, little blocked. Circle two look there for birdie. Rockto throwing backhand mid-range the way it looks like it's flying. Oh. That was his birdie look there. Sometimes he's a pretty quick putter. Yeah, he stepped right up for that one. Probably a little disappointed in the drive. Yeah, Bell and Marwe just, yeah, posterized this hole. Looks like there is OB long too. I don't know if that water's always there, but. Definitely early spring. Yeah. Everything is looking awfully green down there in California in May. It's a good time for these golf tournaments to be happening down there. So nice. Yeah, you're going to want to avoid August. The grass turns brown. <laughs> it's a little warm. All right, there we have it. Front nine, round one for the Auburn Open. Here's our leaderboard after nine holes. Matt Bell, the hot six down through nine. Tim Den out of Fresno, the five. Raven Newsom, Parker Welk, a couple four downs, also touring pros. Yeah, and then you see the little bit, you know, minus two seems to be a fairly popular score for that front nine. So let's see if these guys can kind of step it up on the back nine, but it does get a little more wooded back there, I believe, so. Right. Josh Antown, always a force down out here in Northern California. He shows up. People are expecting big things out of him for sure. All right, we'll see you on the back nine. Sweet.